today, right? You can do yet. All right. Well, we'll fix that. <laughs> um, okay. So we already did this slide, but I said in order to understand um, kind of if there's a hot spot in a molecule, you got to understand its Lewis structure. So hopefully you can take those three atoms, you know, two oxygens and one carbon, and, and knock out that Lewis structure. Have both the central carbon and the, the terminal oxygens all have a complete octet with that. And I brought these. I don't know if they'll help or not. I'll go ahead and kind of set them by you. I've never done this before, but definitely have enough of these for you guys. And if this helps, you can, you're welcome to just take it home for this unit of material. I know in um, organic chemistry, uh, which my husband teaches, which is a great course, by the way, in case you need another chemistry class. Um, but in organic chemistry, they do a lot of spatial stuff. So um, he, Dr. Snipes, sent and makes sure that they have a kit. Okay, so it's a spatial deal. Okay, so we basically said we can kind of finish that thought where are the hot spots? And what you do is you look for the center of positiveness and the center of negativeness. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and see how this works with your make that loose structure. And remember, it feels like you're going to bend, like, like break the second bond, covalent bond there for the double bond. I guess that would be what, a pi bond, right? Mm -hmm. And all the black ones really kind of help. But I guess in this case, as long as it doesn't have to be black, as long as everything has four little receptors. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because I was like, well, how does that get linear? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how that works. So hopefully these will help. Kind of squeeze the double bond. And with regard to hot spot polarity and stuff like that, if you're like me, and I'm going to go ahead and admit this, if you're like me, these um, four electrons, these two pairs of lone pair electrons on both oxygens, you're like, wouldn't that be partially negative? No. Okay, that's not how it works. Okay. So this is kind of what we have going on. So if I was to squeeze, if I were to squeeze those, those two double bonds, it looks flat, right? So, okay, so that makes it linear. Then, I don't know if I have mine handy, so hopefully you have yours handy, but if you look up the electronegativity of um, carbon, it's less than the electronegativity of oxygen, thus the partially positive on the carbon and the partially negative on the oxygens. Then spatially, if you have negative, negative, and positive, of course, the center of positiveness is the blue, is the carbon atom, and the center of um, negativeness between two oxygens is also on the blue. That's why this thing is nonpolar, okay? And we said if something's nonpolar, this is the symbol, mu is the symbol for net dipole moment. It has no net dipole moment. It's a wash. It has um, two dipoles. Because to me, there's a dipole here and a dipole there, but they cancel each other out. So another example, let's look at water. So if you're going to do water, I'm not going to keep doing all these, but we can do water. And I think what works well is those little blanks for hydrogens, because they're kind of dead ends, right? Central oxygen atom. but that oxygen atom has two lone pair electrons. So yours probably looks something like this. Okay. So now we've spent a lot of time in Gen Chem 1 to say that, um, that that oxygen, since it's got four things extending from it, okay, sigma, sigma, lone pair, lone pair, it's got four things extending from it, it did sp3 hybridization. And we would say the geometry is tetrahedral, you know, bond angle 109.5, right there, okay. Um, but honestly, if you just ignore those, can you see where we actually are going to call the shape of this bent, the molecular shape. That's 
kind of, I didn't do much with that in Chem 1 on purpose, but the shape of the molecules bent. Okay, so then what happens is the oxygen is partially negative, the hydrogen is partially positive. We talked about this on Wednesday. The center of positiveness is between the two hydrogens. The center of negativeness is on the oxygen. Okay, so you have, you do have a net dipole moment. In fact, the net dipole moment has a value of 1.85 divided. Okay. So that makes this polar. This is a polar molecule. Okay, and then we talked about the, the little maps where the red color means that it's electron rich, that would be over the oxygen, and the blue means electron poor would be over the, both the hydrogens. Okay. So even though, even though you have to look at the, the polarity of the individual bonds to get to the polarity of the molecule, okay, you do. I guess there's no even two. You need to look at the individual polarities to understand the polarity of, of the molecule. And the way it works out is if you have symmetry, then you're going to be able to do some canceling out. Case in point, you know, we had symmetry with our carbon dioxide. We have a degree of symmetry with our water molecule. Okay, we can like do a, a symmetry could we could do like a mirror down like that. Okay, um, but it's not as symmetrical as this. I think this would be like more like a point of symmetry for the carbon dioxide. So just in general, if it's symmetrical, you can hopefully look for it to be nonpolar because the positiveness and negatives coincide. Okay, if it's not symmetrical, okay, if it's lopsided then you're probably going to have a net dipole moment. And if you have a net dipole moment, it makes a polar molecule. So to, just to kind of, so symmetry, nonpolar, non-symmetric, polar. Okay. So now these are molecular shapes. In fact, in my lecture notes, I mostly, and I'll show you when the exception is, but anytime you see the word shape, think molecule. And I'm not going to even put it up here, but the word geometry in general, in my notes, means that electron pair geometry. Okay. So molecular shapes, um, some of them that have a great, a significant amount of um, symmetry to them would be the tetrahedral, trigonal planar, and linear. So I'm going to switch models here so we're all kind of on the same page. Let's say a good example of this is methane, um, tetrahedral. So I'm going to go ahead and this is CH4. That carbon atom has undergone sp3 orbital hybridization and it has three hydrogens on each one of them. Okay, so the shape of the molecule is tetrahedral. In addition to the geometry of the carbon atom is tetrahedral. Okay, um, I have an example coming up of BF3. Remember boron is that irritating element that doesn't want an octet. How many does boron want? How many electrons does it want? Six. Yes, exactly. So it's not uncommon then to see um, six things. I'm looking for one that has uh, three easies. Okay, so this green atom can be boron. Okay, and these could be fluorines. BF3 is a common one that we talk about. It's a molecule. Okay, and the boron has a complete uh, set of six electrons. So not only is, has that boron undergone sp2 orbital hybridization, and not only is the geometry on that central boron atom um, trigonal planar, but also the molecules trigonal planar. And honestly, even though there's polarity in these bonds, the center of, I think it's positiveness, and the center of negativeness brought by these fluorine atoms, they coincide, they annihilate each other. So that would be trigonal planar. Um, an example of something that's linear, I'll just kind of stick with my uh, CO2, okay? Um, so the shape of the molecule is linear. So shapes in general that tend to be non-symmetrical, okay? And then if it's not symmetrical, 
the positive and the negatives don't annihilate each other, if it's not symmetrical, it's probably going to be polar. So shapes that tend to be, uh, or molecular shapes that tend to bring polarity, um, water is a good example. Okay, I'll go ahead and let me go ahead and take off the lone pair electrons. And you see this vent up here? That is the shape of a water molecule. It's bent. And why is it bent? Well, it's got these lone pair electrons <laughs> that are causing that, okay? Um, pyramidal, a good example, if you're okay with this, I'm going to convert this from CH4 to NH3. Good example of, and we're going to see it here in a minute, but ammonia, NH3. Remember, it has nitrogen, hydrogen, 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 lone pair electrons, okay? So that actually makes it from being symmetrical or having four equal uh, bonds to uh, carbons to being non-symmetrical. So if we look at this, this is going to look like a pyramid. So the molecular, the shape of the molecule NH3 is pyramidal. Um, the last one there, um, if you have a linear molecule, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is um, that, let's see, if you have a linear molecule, it doesn't necessarily mean that the centers of positiveness and negativeness are going to coincide. If we just kind of bear with me, and instead of um, CO2, let's make this COS. Plausible, okay. In that case, um, even though I imagine the sulfur is more electronegative than the carbon, so we have partially positive on the carbon, partially negative on the oxygen, partially negative on the sulfur, but now that center of nakedness does not lie right in the center there. It's a little lopsided. So it's linear, but it's not going to, um, it's going to be, have a little bit of polarity because the nakedness is not going to be in the center because we have two different atoms in, on either side of the carbon atom. So that's kind of what we have going on. Um, so this is kind of uh, clever, it's not from this textbook, but it's from a textbook that I've used before, where this is where I said um, you have to, if you want to on your slides, you can change the word geometry to shape. That would not be what I would do. And in fact, you could put molecular shape if you wanted to. So basically, what, um, what's on this table is to take uh, kind of patterns where you have an, one atom of one type of element and another atom of another type of element, like pattern AB, for instance, right here. You know, HF, HCl, HBr, HI, H2. And to look at the net dipole moments. That's what mu is. Now, of those I've circled, which one is, there's only one, which one is nonpolar? H2. H2 is the only one that's nonpolar. Why? Right, it's zero. The net dipole moment is zero, exactly. Um, let's look at the next one. So the next one just has the broad pattern. Again, it's a type of two elements, element A and element B. And it has the pattern uh, one atom of one element and three atoms of the other atom element, so AB3. So you have NH3, NF3, BF3. Okay. And over here, okay, they've gone ahead and they said, if you go ahead and draw the Lewis structure, you are going to come up with molecular shape of trigonal... Uh, pyramidal, trigonal pyramidal, and trigonal planar. Um, I used, by the way, instead of trigonal pyramidal, I just used pyramidal. Okay, so this is what they're saying. NH3, I said, was pyramidal. Lone pair electrons kind of make that happen. And NF3, the same thing. Are they polar? Why aren't they polar? That makes them polar. Yep. Yep. So if mu is not equal to zero, then molecule is polar.
that means it has a net dipole moment. It has a net dipole moment. I'll just put DPM for dipole moment. Okay, let's look at, um, there's a few other, okay, so over, I'll just go ahead and show you the other two. So in the same table, they get an AB2 and an AB4. Okay, so examples of molecules with that form are given, and then the net dipole moment is given. Um, so which, okay, I'm going to say, um, my question is going to be in regards to polar molecule. Which molecule at the top here, okay, um, so draw Lewis structures. I'll just put Lewis structures up here, draw them. Okay, and your hints go something like this. Um, these, unless I say so, it basically has a middle atom like we did in lab, okay? So SO2 has a middle atom, sulfur's in the middle. <laughs> Nitrogen's in the middle of NH3. Sulfur's in the middle of SH2. Now the thing about D, I'll go ahead and tell you, is it has actually, maybe you already figured this out, but it has carbon. I'm just gonna not draw the whole Lewis structure because there might be a double bond, hint, hint, in there somewhere. But for, for D, it has the carbon bonded to another carbon, and then you have these four hydrogens like that. Okay. Again, there might be another bond there somewhere, double bond, which it looks like it because carbon doesn't have a complete octet. So draw the Lewis structure for D. Um, for E, I'm going to warn you that it has an expanded valence. Sulfur is in the middle. I'll just put expanded valence. I don't know if you guys remember what that means when you drew Lewis structures before. But the sulfur here is not going to want, it's going to go for the whole kit and caboodle. It is going to not want 8, 10, but 12 electrons around sulfur. Okay, it's sp3d2, orbital hybridization. Um, and by the way, the kits that I'm giving you, you, you can't make this with the kits. Something that has six electrons or, or six times two, 12 electrons around it. The other one, um, I think you'll, you probably recognize F, uh, carbon's in the middle. And then basically they're just saying carbon has two hydrogens and two uh, chlorines expanding from it. Okay, so those are hints for that one. Um, so 81, you have the answers in the back. Oh, by the way, each 81 and 82 um, are wanting you to say, is, are these molecules polar? Okay. So A here is, is going to be carbon in the middle. Okay. B here, it's going to be sulfur in the middle. What do you think's in the middle for CS2, for the letter C? What would you put in the middle? I would put C, yep. I'll put the carbon in the middle, yep. Um, for D, I'll kind of let you figure out, look at the, remember, it's always the one with the lowest electronegativity in the middle, but some, one of those is going to be in the middle. Um, let's see, I didn't look this up. I think for E, I'm going to tell you this way, and I hope I'm telling you right. I'm pretty sure that, let me go back. I'm done. Oh, not that way. I'm pretty sure for E that um, sulfur is in the middle. And you can blame me if it's not. So you have sulfur, um, oxygen, and chlorines. Again, that's not the final Lewis structure. It's just kind of getting you started. Um, silicon would be in the middle for F. Um, I think phosphorus is in the middle for G. So you have a phosphorus, oxygen, and three fluorines. But again, that is not the final Lewis structure. Um, cool. Where it says give reasons, if you draw the Lewis structure, that is giving you a reason. So. And then the last homework is kind of interesting, and I actually did a little bit of looking up for this one. Hydrogen, like hydrogen peroxide, like the 3% stuff you use at home, okay? Um, the formula is H2O2, okay, 
Okay, and so oxygen actually and hydrogen have a peroxide linkage. So that's kind of an interesting sort of thing. So they actually tell you that the dipole moment, the net dipole moment, it is not equal to zero. Okay, they tell you that it is polar. They actually tell you what the net dipole moment is. Okay, 2.2 to buy, and it's polar. So basically they say, all right, if it's polar, then it can't be like a hot dog. So do you guys remember hydrogen never wants to be in the middle? Okay, so they're basically telling you it's not just one of this. It's not like one long linear thing. Because if it was one long linear thing, straight shot, okay, spatially, if you have the partially positive hydrogens, partially negative oxygens, they would all kind of go inside, right, dab, nab in the middle. So that's not the case, okay? Um, so it can't be linear or else the positive and negativeness would coincide. So the, the re other part says, could you describe a shape that it could account for this dipole moment? And I'm going to say again, draw the Lewis structure. But you know what? I looked it up. And maybe you guys do this at home. All you've got to do is for any of these, type in Lewis structure and write the thing. And they'll give it to you. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. But if you did that, you would come across this cute little figure. So this is what hydrogen peroxide looks like. The Lewis structure, you have 14 valence electrons to do something with, and I didn't do this, somebody else did. Okay, So you have a single bond uh, between the oxygens, two lone pair electrons, two pairs of lone pair electrons also um, associated with each oxygen. And then if you go ahead and look a little bit further, it kind of shows you that you kind of have this zigzagging sort of going on. Okay, So in space, they're trying to show you kind of folded piece of paper that's not a right angle, but close, okay? And in this piece of paper, this hydrogen lies, and in this other piece of paper, the other hydrogen lies. And kind of on the fold, the two oxygens lie. Okay, so spatially, our region of center of positiveness is going to be maybe here-ish, and our region of negativeness is going to be here-ish. Okay, so I have that type Centers do not And I did post this as a, as a picture before I took class. Okay, so we are going to take off running on Monday. I'm kind of glad that, I hope this has helped. Because Monday we're going to be referring back to polarity. And then Monday we should have the notes. And Monday she should have the notes, yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and print part two, just in case, yeah. <laughs> Better to not be surprised when you can help it.